Well, ladies and gentlemen, this is the first edition of Hands and Heels for the Jumper Punch page. This might be a bit of a uh, a change of codes. I think we're usually quite Aussie rules and AFL focused, but uh, I, I still haven't gotten out of the old carpentry <laughs> yet, Paul. <laughs> <laughs> love it, absolutely love it, Vince. Got the cap uh, on and everything. Yeah, why not? Why not? Uh, Spring Carnival is well and truly here, so we thought that there there are a handful of guests and a, a whole heap of listeners and followers and watchers of the Jumper Punch that are into their races, and the Spring Racing Carnival comes about only once a year, and it's uh, it's a time to, to celebrate some of the best horses and best trainers and best owners and jockeys and best punters, for that matter, uh, in in what is such a, a huge time of the year for, for horse racing and thoroughbred racing and harness racing, for that matter, as well. So we're going to touch on both uh, throughout the spring carnival and we'll, we'll also run it through the summer, the uh, the summer racing carnival as well when they venture over to Perth and uh, when the racing really starts to heat up here weather-wise too. So this is going to be a little fun, a little bit of fun that we're going to have here on the Jumper Punch. So for those followers of us on the Jumper Punch page and on Blue Abroad, uh, for those racing people, even if you're not racing folk and you like the spring racing carnival and it's that time of year where you like to have a bit of a flutter five or ten bucks each way something like that i think this this might be uh this might be the show for you but uh vince very familiar face on the jumper punch you're not just uh, a big uh, big thing to do with the carton football club and the jumper punch and more broad but uh you do love your racing as well harness racing in particular yes indeed paul it's an absolute pleasure to be working with you my friend yeah. and um really looking forward to this especially uh working with SEN's very own <laughs> Paolo Sebastiani. Thank you very uh, much. And, uh, yeah, looking forward to uh, what's uh, about to uh, embark on us. And, um, of course, apart from the Thoroughbred Spring Carnival, which is basically starting this Saturday with yep. the Turnbull Stakes, we've also got the start of the uh, the Harness Racing um, Country Cup season, which actually started yep. a couple of weeks ago at Maryborough and um, also... Um, we saw a big meeting last Friday night before the grand final at Kilmore where we had the Kilmore Pacing Cup and Trotters Cup as well. So that's uh, already well into action. And, um, yeah, the summer carnival is uh, very exciting as usual come January and February. Yeah. And um, we've got some big races coming up in harness as well. We do indeed. Uh, we've got one that's coming up next week as well, which I just want to touch on to next uh, Saturday. We've got a big meeting at Melton, is it not? Indeed, yes, it's the uh, richest middle distance race, the Victoria Cup, as well as the uh, Victoria Oaks and Victoria Derby, uh, or Derby, which was depending on where you came from. Whichever way you want to, whichever way. I think I think we say Derby here in Victoria, and yeah. they say Derby <laughs> over in Western Australia. So we'll we'll use Derby, saying it's in Victoria. Um, but yeah, that's a big meeting coming up on yeah. uh, on the fourteenth of October. Yeah. So um, don't Love forget it. to. Um, Make your way down to Melton and maybe yes. even say hello to us that night. Yes, potentially. I'm going to try and work around and see what I can do. Uh, it, it is a nice night down there. Uh, yeah. Speaking of nice things, Flemington has a big Group 1 card, which is going to be the essence of the show, really. Uh, so the show is yep. going to revolve around predominantly Victorian racing from a thoroughbred and harness racing perspective. And we'll be focusing on uh, the main Victorian meetings. And look, if there's a winner to be found, Somewhere outside of Victoria, it's we're going to venture outside the state as well. Anywhere to make a little bit of cash, eh? They pay the same odds at Menangatang yeah. <laughs> picnic races as they do as they do at Flemington Pool. So they do. You might not get TAB facilities though out at Menangatang. That's the difference. Uh, but yeah, we'll certainly then, um, have a look out for uh, for a good winner or two here or there. We shall indeed. We shall indeed. Well, look, the main race on the card it's going to be the the Turnbull Stakes. So. Look, without further ado, let's just get stuck straight into it. There's 10 races on the program, but I want to focus on the big race first because it's the most newsworthy topic. Okay. Uh, romantic, yeah, Romantic Warrior comes here as a $2.20 favourite. This Hong Kong superstar has never run lower than second in its career mm. and um, its form at Sha Tin and across the wait for age races in Hong Kong has been nothing short of scintillating. It's a $2.20 favourite at the moment. Uh, other horses in the market, you've got West Wind Blows, another international combatant, Simon and Ed Crisford send this down here as well. Uh, and then in the market, Sulkham and Osipenko, the Waller pair, uh, those are the other two that are in single figures. But look, Romantic Warrior, I don't know if you've seen the stories around this horse, Vince, that it missed mm. its feed and it missed the trial and then they sent over a special batch of its feed from 
from Hong Kong and uh, he turned his nose up at the Australian feed and he decided, no, no, I want my... <laughs> He, he must be. He must have Italian bloodlines in him. I think he, he, wanted, he wanted his own food, mate. <laughs> I think so. There must be something like that about it. Must must want his pasta shutta, you know, like uh, made by Nonna. <laughs> <laughs> hey, there's nothing but wrong with that. Oh, look, it, it's either that or the owners are trying to come up with all sorts of uh, stories to try and get the odds up a little bit because um, <laughs> otherwise this thing would probably start at dollar twenty. But uh, I think it's I think it's even money at the moment, isn't it? It is indeed, yeah. Two dollars, <laughs> depending on where you shop, you get about two ten, two twenty, two twenty five. Mm. Uh, look, has to go on top for me. There's no arguments here. The only little query, the only mm -hmm. little query is we've had a bit of rain about in Melbourne. Now you can probably see the sun uh, out to my side here. That it, it is beaming down at the moment. So I reckon they yeah. would. They would have kept the irrigation off the track. Liam O'Keefe, the track <laughs> manager, would have let the. Uh, just let the rain do its thing. Uh, they'll just leave the track alone. And I'm not too fussed about the barrier because it's probably going to go forward anyway. Yeah. Again, the only query is just whether or not it can handle the track with a little bit of give in it. But just based on its breeding, uh, his breeding suggests that he can um, handle slightly soft going. And in his early career, for, for people who don't know, he was actually pre-trained and trained early in his career um, in Britain, which of course all those tracks out there are, you know, they're, they're almost soft blind. as. Mm. Yeah. So he's had some sort of experience on it. So I wouldn't be too perturbed by it. He goes on yeah. top. Of it. There is one runner here, Vince. Now you're going to love this because it's got one of the most beautiful names in the field, Francesco Wardi. <laughs> yes. <laughs> A sensational maybe, maybe this is the horse that needs pasta shooter. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Might have stolen the feed off Romantic Warrior, I think. Um, maybe. The combination of Damien Lane and Chris Waller is, yeah, it, you, you're talking A1, world class. Mm. Uh, I like the one, Romantic Warrior. It's on top, but no reason why you shouldn't have something small each way on number four, Francesco Wardi. I think it's going to run a big race. That's... That would yeah. be my small play in the race. I think the one will win. If you can get $2.50 for Romantic Warrior Vince, I'd be loading up. Uh, but just a little bit too short for me. I want to see him first. Fair enough, Paul. And, and look, I think the horse does go well fresh as well. So um, yeah. uh, I, I can't see it being beaten either. Um, it's got to mm. carry the 59 kgs as opposed to yeah. the others. But um, I've got a bit of a watch on uh, last year's Melbourne Cup win a gold trip. I think okay. um, I think uh, that'll be worth watching to see how he goes. Yep. Um, I know he's had a few runs since the Melbourne Cup, but um, last start fourth I thought was pretty encouraging. I, th I think I'd be um, having a little bit of each way on gold trip. I think okay. he might be flashing down the outside to at least run into the placings. Yeah, I think. Yeah, if you, that's if you think Romantic Warrior is a bit too short. Of course, yeah. I think the only concern might be the really wide barrier, but I mean the trainer and the jockey. He always gets them. back anyway. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They'll, 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 they'll figure it out. From the wide gate. Um, yeah, I think it might be one for a keep, keep safe for maybe a run or two after, but it's sure. one to definitely watch. Uh, so one from four for me. Keep an eye on the five as well. It's one of these international combatants that's come over here from okay. from Great Britain too. So the five, and then in for a place, uh, Uncle Bryn. Went really well last start at Caulfield in the Foundation Cup. Uh, and I think he can run a nice race from barrier one, two. So one from four, from five, from eight. Those are my numbers. The only bet in the race at the moment is very small each way. Number four, Francesco Guardi. Okay. And if there's ever a race caller that should be able to call a race like this and pronounce that horse's name properly, it's you. <laughs> <laughs> all we hear is Francesco Guardi. <laughs> Guardi, yeah. That's yes, all we've got get. to put that Australian accent on all those Italian we do, names. We do. All right, yes. now the main, anyway. so the main race is done. That is done yep. and dusted. Let's go all the way back now to race number one because, again, race yep. eight in Turnbull, that was the most newsworthy race that we needed to focus on. Should be a on. great race. I'm really looking oh, forward to it. It's going to be a cracker. It, you can't be – Vince, Flemington, group one, wait for age, middle distance, yep. beautiful, cool spring day. That's – this is – it's what you live for, mate. Fantastic lead-up for the Cox Plate too. For oh, it's brilliant horses. as well, yeah. We, mm. we saw Winx. She used this as a lead-up. For yeah. her uh, Cox Plate triumphs late in her career as well. And um, Romantic Warrior is on the Cox Plate path. So, again, yeah. whatever he does in this race, he's, he's just going to improve on. So he, he, he won't even have to be at 100% to be winning this. Sure, uh, sure. But, yeah, it's uh, it's going to be a cracker of a race. 
Uh, race number one. Now, Vince, I don't know about you, but I'm sure you've been to many a spring carnival. These yep. straight races can be a death trap. Yes, indeed. <laughs> <laughs> they can be a genuine death trap. Uh, this I've is a never, very I've never liked them, Paul. I don't like races where there's no curves and bends and yeah. You know, and and uh, it's all sort of spread out amongst uh, eighteen horses, and you got horses on 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 the far side, and, and horses on the rail, uh, on the outside rail, the inside rail. It's, it's a what, race, race caller's nightmare, isn't oh, it? Oh, one thing, it is so hard to call straight races at Flemington. Mm. It, you, you have to be, so, and Matt Matt Hill's just a genius at it. He's he's so so good at it. He's going to have a tough time. Um, yep. with this one it's almost the capacity field uh yep. views is the favorite uh now all these horses vince i don't know if you so these particular rosemont silks for mike mick price and mick kent jr peter moody's got a few mm. all these horses purchased by anthony mithen they've all got football ties in them so you've got a few you've yeah. got views you've got a few other horses that have been named after some geelong players a couple of hawthorne players as well so yeah um, they don't particularly go too well, although Views has been in okay form. It's the favourite. Etienne gets a run as well. Uh, and yes. Miller for the Hayes boys. Uh, you know all about the uh, the Colin and David Hayes stage. Yes, Their boys of course. Are taking over. Um, yep. And our last cash. Hopefully we don't have to worry about our last cash. <laughs> Hopefully it's not going to take our last cash in, re in race one. We've got another nine races we to go. We don't want anything like that to happen. Um, <laughs> it's actually been very well backed here. And uh, look, this is a very difficult race. I would not really be recommending you have, look, it's one of those races where I think early in the program, you want to see what's happening with the track, especially mm. the fact that we've got multiple straight races on the day. So I would be using this race as a race just to see where the jockeys veer, yeah. what the better part of the track is. And you'll see often they'll split or often they'll all go to one section of the track after they've walked it before the first. Mm. So from what track walkers are saying, lanes one to two, so on the far side where they normally race around the bend, probably a little bit of a disadvantage. You probably want to be drawn up on the speed, but maybe three or four off the fence with the yep. cover blending in. It's different for the straight races. If you're drawn on the inside, it's just, it's almost sayonara. Barrier one, two, and three. Yeah. Straight races at Flemington over the carnival are just, it, it, it's it's just a sickening watch. You, you usually don't want to be there. Yeah. Um, I'm looking middle to wide barriers here. Now, there's a horse trained by Ben Brisbane. Um, Super Arzi. Yeah, Super Arzi. Look, it's it's eighteen dollars. You can probably get twenty to one on the day. Mm. Gets blinkers for the first time. Drawn out wide. I like Michael Dare as a jockey. There's a bit of pressure on up front in this race, especially if the eighteen um, does get the run. It's nominated for Mooney Valley, but I'm certain they'll be going here. Yeah. Um, regardless, I think there's going to be a fair bit of speed and. I think this horse can just settle midfield and punch through and potentially be hard to beat each way. So I'm not focusing too much on this race. It's very difficult, very difficult. Yeah, very open race. I mean, when you've got a favourite that's nearly $4, um, yeah. you know, pretty much anything can win. Um, mm. Yeah, I, look, I agree with you. I think it's a bit of a bit of a watch um, yes. rather than go hard. Yeah. Um, yeah. You could it's be going hard and, and what, what literally going home yeah. with your last cash. What do I say on ECN when we have these moments? Keep your powder dry. That's it. <laughs> exactly right. Keep your powder dry. I'm going to be doing the same for the next race. We've got a, a whole field of first starters, the two-year-olds uh, in the Dali Maribyrnong trial stakes. We've got Blue Illusion. Maybe that's a bit of an omen bet for... Yes, I was thinking <laughs> that. <laughs> well, hey, we, we haven't had a blue illusion this year. It was actually true. It wasn't a mirage this year, Vince. <laughs> well, it wasn't. Uh, well, it's blue if, we thought we were, if we thought we were going to win the flag, it was a blue illusion. But uh, <laughs> hopefully next year's flag is not that. <laughs> but uh, I do like the combination of Jamie Carr on, on a uh, James Cummings horse. Oh, and um, yes. his horse, uh, very well bred. A lot of these horses, of course, um, in fact, all of these horses haven't haven't mm. um, haven't started before, so um, it's a two-year-old open race. Who knows? Yep. It's all based on breeding, and it's all based on you know the word that comes out of the stables. But of course, um, of course, of course. another one where you may want to keep your powder dry. But what, what do you think, Paul? You're the expert uh, here. Look, look the, the blue illusion has had practice up the straight, which I think you always have to pay credence to, with, especially with these younger horses. Yeah, but again, you just don't know. I mean. Pre the pressure on race day is different to pressure in jump outs and gallops and trials. 
Bodyguard is a, I think it's a $1.5 million purchase for the Peter and Paul Snowden stable. They definitely paid over a million dollars for mm. this two-year-old Colt. Um, now, he was entered last week in the Breeders' Plate at Randwick, but he was scratched from that to race here. The only problem is he's drawn the inside, which is not ideal. So, yeah. I, again, this is just a pure watch. A lot of these horses, Vince, will run and then be immediately spelled for the autumn. A lot of these will go to potentially a blue diamond. Yeah. Okay. A lot of these early two-year-olds will go potentially towards a blue diamond or even the Magic Millions yeah. uh, in the Gold Coast at the start of January. So, yep. again, pure watch for me. James McDonald is booked on an interesting horse, number eight, Wolfgang. Uh, but, I, I, yeah, nothing I, for I me. I saw that. Right There's a bit of a uh, football... Um... Um, theme to a couple of these horses apart from Blue Illusion, you've got Centre Square number four, <laughs> and um, and uh, yeah, probably uh, Bodyguard number three is for some, for <laughs> some people. The they need bodyguard need <laughs> anyway. I look, I, I think, um, I think you're right. I think it's a bit of a yep. watch again for this sort of race. Have you ever backed? A horse in a race like this where none of them have yeah, started all, before? all the time. Yeah, all the time. Yeah, yeah the two-year-old form. Yeah, if, if you've got an eye with jump outs, uh, I okay. know at, at one of our – well, one of my close friends and, and a friend of the show and a friend of uh, a friend of mine who you, who you met over the weekend in Adrian. Uh, yes. Big, big AD, part of the weekend grill. Um, he he is a jet with uh, with the jump outs and trials. Um, trials. Of, it's a trial form, isn't it? Yeah, one one of the better judges. He, he'll be um, he'll be he'll be with us here next week uh, to do a to do a Caulfield Guinness preview. So I'm I'm really looking forward to to picking his brain and, and picking his mind to to see yep. how he he does it all. He doesn't give much away because he's a smart man. So <laughs> magician <laughs> never never reveals his tricks, my friend. <laughs> yes, that's true. That's very true. Is that where uh, I've been going wrong all of all of these? Probably. <laughs> You and I both. <laughs> <laughs> um, race number three. Now, we've got some intriguing owners here. These are the three-year-olds. Uh, many of these have uh, have had uh, starts in their career that have seen them build up a pretty solid base of residual fitness. Uh, yep. Riff Rocket for Chris Waller <laughs> and James McDonald comes over here from Rose Hill off an 1,800-metre run in BM72 grade. It's a $3.20 favourite. A Apulia. Uh, was scratched from the derby trial at Flemington after he played up in the gates and comes into this one. Uh, mm. drawn wide, <clears throat> barrier 12, intriguing, maybe a little bit difficult from that wide gate. Rip roar for Andrew Forsman. Now, Vince, Andrew Forsman, when, when he sends his horses here from New Zealand, they invariably run very, very well. So he's definitely one to keep an eye on. And then ambassadorial for Gay Waterhouse and Adrian Bott. Uh, this stable is going... I've never seen them go this well, Vince. Uh, you know that they they are yeah. multiple Group One winning stable. Um, you know, Gay's yeah. got the key the safe with obviously our old man being Tommy Smith, but they are going great guns at the moment. Um, the Can you believe it's been ten years since she won her first Melbourne Cup? It's crazy, isn't it? With Fiorenta, mm. yeah, to, yes. to think it's, it's been to think it's been that long for her too. She'll probably have mm. to win a bit here, you'd think. Um, the way she's she's, in, she's in her stables in hot oh, form. Yeah, they are. They're, they're going great guns at the minute. Uh, Difficult race for me here, Vince. Very difficult race. There are a few I liked here that are lightly raced coming into their second or third career starts, but they're okay. drawn out wide, which is just it, it could on the day it could be beneficial for them because they could. Are you looking at? Are you looking at number ten there? I'm looking at ten, Lou. I'm looking yeah. at the likes of uh, Koske for Trent Busserton and Natalie Young. When they get their horses up in distance, they run well especially at long odds. I like to find those trainers at long odds. Mickey yep. O, I was really, really impressed with when he won his maiden at Geelong over 1,726 metres. He looks a real derby prospect, but barrier 16, I've got no idea where he's going to end up. And the favourite, Riff Rocket, barrier one, could be in the depth, could be, could be boxed up in a coffin from the inside gate, which is... <laughs> You, you're trusting James McDonald to get off the fence, mm. but I, I just think the three dollars twenty is a little too short. There is a horse in this field now. It wore the blinkers first time last start, and look, it didn't really do much. It got beaten four and a half lengths at fifty to one, and he's been getting back in his runs. He's never won a race in his life before. Um, he's called Make a Call. Just keep an eye on it. Race three, yep. number four, Make a Call. Just not saying back him. Not saying go nuts. Maybe if for pun a dollar each way. At fifty to one, is what I'm saying. Yep, but you can currently get sixty one dollars on Super Tap or sixty one um, bucks. Yeah, on, yep. fi on fixed odds. So um, yes, 
Just keep just an on. each way uh, long shot. Yep. yep. Just keep an eye on this horse. I think he can run okay. okay. I, I wouldn't be, wouldn't say his runs have been purposefully hidden, but it, he's not a horse that people are going to find in the market. And mm. at fifty to one, sixty to one, I mean, you, you're not exactly outlaying too much to to get a how, decent. Condition. Well, how often do we see numerical form like that, and then all of a sudden there's a one next to its name? Exactly right. You exactly know, right. and the follow and the next and the next time it races, it'll be you know six to one. Exactly right, and and uh, I, I trust the stable as well, Peter and Paul mm. Snowden. Um, they're some of the best trainers in Australia. Yeah. Um, again, six on top for me, no real value in the race. Uh, number okay. four, very very small each way. That's what I'd be going with. But again, as the day progresses, um, the inside might be off, so that three twenty might be uh, very very short. So. Uh, yeah. Let's skip along the Edward Manifold. Okay. I had no idea in this race. I'm not even going to bother focusing on it because this is just way too difficult. Way, way too difficult. I'm just going to do the old new ball, <laughs> bringing out the <laughs> light of the um, just front foot forward and let this go through. Legacies deserves to be favourite off its last start uh, price in the Exford plate. Had to settle up on the speed and only had a little bit of cover when it was, as they were swinging into the straight, probably from mm. about 700 metre onwards, he had cover. Yep. Um, she had cover, but it's not really a race I'm keen to get involved with. She was, um, she had to go uh, along at a much faster tempo than she did at Caulfield the start prior than she did at Flemington. So she's definitely a big improver. And Griff has come out and franked the form of the race by winning the Stutt Stakes at Mooney Valley last week in really impressive fashion. So, yeah, uh, two on top for me, but not a not a bet in this race. No bet in this race. I'd be steering clear, Vince. There's one there that um, is a perfect course for Rodney Dangerfield fans. Number Where's 13, that? perfect. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> do you remember? Oh, do you remember that scene in that movie, Back to School, where he uh, where he uh, walks into a, a women's uh, shower or women's bathroom, and there's this young lady having a shower, and he opens the shower curtain and has a look at her, and she she screams, and he says, "Don't worry, honey, I haven't seen a thing." And then he opens it again and says, you're perfect. <laughs> it's uh, so there you go. Upside. Rodney it's Dangerfield fans, upside. number 13. You could, you could, I'll tell you what, it's a bit of a chance at $5.50 and $2.10, yeah. maybe a little bit each way on it. It was a nice run first up as well in the Jim Maloney uh, when he got back. But I just think the, the problem here is he's probably going to get back again. She's probably going to get back here again as well. So yes. that's yeah. the, again, it, it's one of those races where the horses I really like they're all just drawn too wide. That's that's mm. the only question mark. So uh, yep. nothing for me in this race. Race number five is where my best bet of the day comes up. I really, Very good. I've been waiting for this. I really, really, really like race five, number three. I am unstoppable. Now, he is drawn a little bit um, awkwardly in uh, box in barrier number two. But it is quite a small field, and I get the mm. feeling that he's going to let a couple cross him, and he, Zach Spain should be able to just manoeuvre himself up towards the middle of the course and find a nice run. Um, it's going to be my best of the day, race five, number three. I am unstoppable. The horse I'm a little scared about is Don Corleone. I, know many I was just going to ask you about that one. I know many people are scared of a man like that. <laughs> <laughs> is this the horse that walks onto the track with its own violin case? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the eighteen dollars was an offer too good to refuse for many punters. I think. I reckon. Yeah, the, the twelve dollars is a little bit under the odds for me. Mm. Um, the one that can really improve, I reckon, maybe take a Canale here, three and seven, Vince. Um, yep. I'm not really an exotic player, but I know I know people listening will, will definitely like to play their exotics, quinellas and trifectas and first fours and whatnot. Mm -hmm. I am unstoppable into Kandinsky Abstract, who gets the blinkers first time, drawn up the middle, drawn perfectly, and gets James McDonald as well, which is which is a massive tick. He's had the experience up the straight, blinkers first time, got yep. the wall of polish, James McDonald. Uh, I think he can run a nice race at each way odds, but uh, race five, number three. Uh, is definitely going to be my best bet of well, the day. Well, I'll be taking your advice. The, the horse has been named after you anyway, so um, I'm going to uh, <laughs> I'm going to have my uh, my hard <laughs> earned on, on your best bet of the day. Race hopefully, five, number three, everyone, get on yep, it. Indeed, uh, ho hopefully it's a uh, hopefully it's a winning one as well. Nice colours too, navy blue. Uh, <laughs> always nice to get around as well. Uh, indeed. Yeah, and the other the other one for multiples five and seven, Don Corleone and. Kandinsky abstract you could probably throw in them for 
for second okay. and third. And uh, the nine straight and Angel, I think, can run well, but she was favoured by being drawn outside last start. So, mm -hmm. uh, yeah, she, she was a, a bit flattered by by the track and, and the way it was playing last start. Yeah. Uh, race number six, Princess Grace. I'm a little bit worried about 1,600 back to 14. It's a dollar fifty five favourite. Uh, and the question mark here just has to be with the distance drop. Has been running in some very, very hot races. The Wink Stakes, Memsey Stakes, Maccabi Diva Stakes, you're talking some of the best horses in the land. Mm. Uh, has run really well behind Mr. Brightside, her last two. But, um, yeah, $1.55, no thank you for me. But um, Chris Waller's a genius. And, um, yeah, I think this horse should be winning. But you want to take $1.55, Vince, be my guest. Uh, well, you, you're probably only comforted by the fact that you've got, you know, maybe the leading trainer and the leading jockey. Correct. Right? But, Correct. Um, yeah, very short, I guess, um, too short for some. Yeah. Um, I, look, I, I tended to agree. I thought pretty hard to go past it. But, yeah, do you really want to take those sorts of odds? Well, that's the question. I mean, you might look back on the race and say it wins by four lengths and you say it should have been $1.10. Uh, but <laughs> I'm, just, I'm always just a little yes. bit dubious, especially with mares who I, I, know they're, I know she's been racing in far better grade. I know she's better mm -hmm. than based on her form. But I, I just want to see some wins next to a column next time. And and I, I just, yep. I'm not, yeah, I'm not, I'm not particularly happy to take a dollar fifty. About this horse, I think she'll win, but it's just price orientated for me. There's been a bit of money for life lessons down the bottom with yep. the 55 kilos. Uh, it mm -hmm. ran really well behind Amelia's jewel last start, who was right in the market for the Cox Plate, and yep. um, ran really well at Mooney Valley last start, breaking a track record um, over 1600 meters last start. So that wow. looks like good enough form to be running behind. Mm -hmm. Princess Grace here, but um, yeah, no, I thought nothing. the top weight. I thought the top weight had a bit of an extra chance too. Just different quietly. form, Vince. Different form brings in the Tarzino Trophy mm. form from New Zealand. This combination yep. of Mark Walker and Opie Bosson, skew if. Um, the only question is, it might go skew if from the barrier. That's the only yeah. Well, that, that was know, the only concern, the barrier. But again, I just I I can't be too confident because I don't know how the track is going to play at the moment. Again, they're saying three lanes. Out three do we lanes. Know out the do we know the more. state of the track, Paul? Yeah. So the, at the moment, it's it's coming up as a soft six, but from now until mm. they start running, there's going to be no rain in Melbourne. So that's just the big question mark. Should harden up a bit. Moment. Yeah. The mm. inside, a little bit inferior, as is always the case with Flemington. But yep. you want to be up on the speed, blending into the race with cover, forward or just better than midfield and blending yep. into the race at the right time. So I think Princess Grace is going to get that type of run here, and, that, and her form is superior to anything in this race. And the way she meets these horses at the weight, she's just waited to win this race. Um, right. But, again, I, I couldn't take the $1.55. Um, I reckon we move on to the next race because this is going to be an intriguing one. It's the Bart Cummings, the Lexus Bart Cummings. Now, the winner of this, Vince, gets a golden ticket into the Melbourne Cup. Now, this race has got very, very fond memories, mm. very fond memories. A lovely horse by the name of El Mandon won this race in 2016 and qualified for the <laughs> Melbourne Cup. And I'm still yes. ranting, raving about El Mandon, my friend. <laughs> you're still, you're oh, still, like are you still counting the cash from that one, are you? The laptop I'm currently using is named El Mandon. So, uh, <laughs> you bought it with the money you made from betting on it. Indeed. Yeah. He, he has well and truly served me very well, um, that great Can horse. you believe it's already seven years ago? Mate, you getting the seven-year itch? You getting the seven-year itch now? No, I'm getting the seven-year hairline. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I'm getting. Oh, I'm you getting had hair the back then. Hairline. Yeah, don't um, worry, I'm, I'm losing yeah, mine very quickly. Yeah, yeah. 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 <laughs> um, now, favourite here. I was really keen on first immortal for Mark and Levi Kavanagh, but he's drawn. He's drawn Flemington Station, this bloke. He's drawn barriers. Yeah. And he'll come in a few because there have been a few scratchings. Yeah. But he's going to be drawn the widest. I've got absolutely no idea where he's going to get to in the run. Um, he, he, if, he, if he had a drawn, if he had a drawn a middle to inside gate, he would be $2.80, $2.70 in the run um, in this yeah. race. Uh, he had to carry 63 kilos at Caulfield last start, all beating benchmark 78 grade. But he trotted him over 2,000 metres. Step up in distance is going to be beautiful for him. But I've got him on top, but I just can't. Just, just the barrier is just really, really irking me. 
If he was drawn, if he was drawn in the first half of those two barriers, he would he wouldn't be three dollars sixty. He'd be one dollar sixty. No, he'd be two eighty. He'd be he'd be two eighty. Um, he'd be under three bucks if he was. But I just I can't come into the wide barrier. I think that's what's going to get him beaten, unfortunately. But what I do think is that this is going to be a really good fitness run for him to prepare for something that could get him into the Melbourne Cup in the next couple of weeks. Um, mm -hmm. So maybe he might go to. Um, he might go to the 2800 meter race that is on uh, a couple of days before Cup Day, and then quickly back up for the Melbourne Cup. But um, yeah, he, he may even come out and win this race. Who knows? Who knows? Virtuous circle for me here, Vince. Small okay. each way. Damian Lane. Okay. Uh, Damian Lane gets booked for Billy Egan. Loved his run last start behind Uncle Bryn, floating artist and the like. Uh, he's going to be ready to rock and roll. He might just be a run short, but. At fourteen bucks, fifteen dollars a win as well. Uh, I'd be, yeah, I'd be happy to have something each way on him. Uh, the improver could be number four, Serpentine. Should go straight to the front um, at twelve dollars. Th those are the two I want to play in the race, Vince. Number four mm -hmm. and number six. Mm -hmm. so, Sounds good. Uh, golden ticket into the Melbourne Sounds Cup good. as well. Um, By the way, Paul, I'm, no, I'm, hearing, a bit of a, I'm hearing a bit of an echo back in my earphones. Are you getting an echo back in my earphones? Are you getting an echo? Back? No, no echo for me. I'm good. No, I'm all, right. all right. That's fine. I'll try and ignore I'm it. Out of here. All right. That's fine. I'll try and ignore Hopefully, it. the listeners aren't, or the, aren't getting getting viewers aren't getting an echo back on. Viewers aren't getting an echo. No, no, no. We should should be okay. Should be okay. I think we're okay. Okay. Now, race number nine. Okay. Race number nine, Star Patrol, $2.70 favourite. Jigsaw, the second elect, as is Say Magique. Uh, triple Missile, 750. Again, another tough straight race. Star Patrol was fantastic first up, but uh, probably just a little too short for me. I'm just querying the fact that it might be a soft track and the fact that he's never won on a soft track. All his, all his form has come on good to firm surfaces, so that's a mm -hmm. big question mark for me. Loves racing up the straight, though, so that's a big... That's a big tick for him, but um, nothing for me in this one, Vince. I'm I'm steering clear. That's uh, that's one of those races where I'm happy to to let through. Say Majik can run really well, I think, but it's a lightly race type. Um, yeah, that that could be the improver at odds um, at five dollars and a dollar eighty five the place, but nothing for me really stands out here. Okay. Um, okay, enough. Uh, yeah, and then the last race Fair as well. Enough. Last race is very similar. It's yeah. They're all just horses that go around. Tamerlane, the favourite for Godolphin. It's just folk, stable chains, Gavin Bedgood, pretty good trainer. Um, when they go to him from a different stable, they invariably run really well. Um, he's a very nifty trainer. Damien Oliver book first up is a very, very interesting jockey booking. So just watch the market with this horse, number one, just folk. Um, it's a pretty talented horse. Uh, Josh Julius did have him, but now he's with Graham Bedgood. He can definitely get the horse to improve. And if he does improve, I think off his last couple of ratings, could he could very well run a big race here at, at nice odds. Uh, yeah, it race ten number one. Just keep an eye on the market with that. So uh, okay. that's a wrap for Flemington, Vince. Okay. Um, we're going to skip along to some harness racing, but just to recap my bets um, yep. in the main race, the Turnbull yep. Stakes, small each way Francesco Wardi at the seventeen bucks or the eighteen dollars. Have something small each way on that. Something small each way, race one, number four, Super Razi. Uh, I think it can run well with the blinkers going on for the first time. Uh, and then the others that are coming up, race five, number three, is going to be my best bet of the day. I'm unstoppable. Um, take it in maybe a trifecta or a quinara or a first four um, with five and seven, Don Corleone and Kandinsky abstract. Um, outside of that, um, I'm pretty much done and dusted for the day. And again, keep an eye, race 10, number one, um, just folk can run uh, okay, yep. but just keep an eye on the market. And then in yep. the Bart Cummings, uh, horse number four, Serpentine, and horse number six, Virtuous Circle each way. So those are my bets for the day. Uh, let's get a wriggle on to harness racing, Vince, because this is where you're going to take over with uh, the expertise, my friend. Uh, what are we going That's with okay. race five and race six at That's Gloucester okay. Park for tonight, Friday night? Yes, uh, we are yes, going to go uh, to Gloucester Park. It's um, WA uh, Oaks night WA down there at um, that beautiful there, circuit at, uh, in Perth. That beautiful circuit in Perth. Yep. And uh, the race just before and, that uh, is race, race four, that is race and that's four. the free-for-all. And that's the free-for-all. These are the horses that uh, are likely to compete in the WA Pacing Cup coming up in December. Coming up in December. 
and um, and um, I cannot go past the pole marker here, here, Minstrel. Going to be driven by the uh, Red Bond Stables number one driver, Denny Roberts, who's flying at the moment. Uh, it's a dollar fifty. I know that's short, especially for thoroughbred punters, but um, harness racing punters will be very used to those sorts of odds for something drawn one at Gloucester Park. And um, I think the uh, Quinella of the night here will be one and two. I think the two will probably just slip in right behind it. The reason I say that is because there's nine across the front at Gloucester Park. Mm-hmm. Unlike here in Victoria where there's seven Unlike across the front and then number eight goes behind the one uh, on the second line. Across the park, there's nine horses. and There's only nine horses in this race, so there's no second line. So number two will more than likely slip in behind the one. That will force the uh, the Greg, sorry, the Gary Hall runners in Diego and jumping Jack Mack to put the pressure on outside the leader. That tends to take its toll. To take Especially uh, over a distance Especially, like this, uh, which is 2,536, 2,536 metres. So I normally so look for the horses that are drawn on the um, on the inside. So even so Mighty Ronaldo so may decide Ronaldo to take the spot three, three back on the fence, number three. The fence, number so they're my numbers. Right. One, two, One, two, three. One, and I'm throwing three. in the WA Pacing Cup the winner the from Pacing earlier this year, Diego, for fourth, number six. Fourth, number six. Okay, love it. So one, but I really two, do three, like the Quinella yeah, of really one and two. Like okay, like it. Maybe even an exactor as well for Maybe those. Maybe even an exactor. So yeah. one, one, two, three, and six. Absolutely love it. Uh, all right, let's go to race number five, uh, Vince. The WA Oaks with 150k. This race for the girls. Indeed, this is uh, the Indeed. biggest race in this WA the for, the, uh, for, for the for the mares, uh, for the mares, and the uh, fillies. And the uh, um, so, uh, look, this one here, so this one what we've here, got is a Gary Hall-driven horse, Gary which is Hall usually good off the front, and it's drawn the front, front August, August Moon. Moon. So it's almost so – it's, it's a second favourite at the moment at $2.20. And its main danger, its main danger is, is number 11 from Victoria, Victoria Soho Seraphine. Michael Soho Stanley's Seraphine. gone over there. He won at his first start there in, in um, WA with Kyle WA Harper aboard, but Michael Harper Stanley's board. decided yep. to go there and drive him. And himself and um, and it is the two dollar favorite, but it is off the second favorite, line, so he won't get it all his own way. And the other danger in the race the is the one next to it, number 12, the turn the page turn for the Greg the Bond stable Greg Bond with Denny Roberts with aboard Roberts there as well. There Look, as well. I think these three I horses will fight, three it will fight it out, um, but I wouldn't also, um, also um, rule out number two, Zafira or Zafira, right? Zafira. Trained and driven by Dylan Edgerton and Green, and he'll be in the race at some point. I think he'll actually take the lead initially, number two, and then August Moon will take the lead off him. And so he'll have the sweet run behind the leader for most of the race, number two. Race number two. Right. So, uh, look, I've so, decided uh, to go uh, with the favourite for Michael Stanley. He's not going over there for nothing. He obviously rates this horse. It's probably the best horse in the race, to be fair. If he was drawn front line, he'd be a clear favourite. But he's going to have to do a little bit of work to get into the race. I don't think that August Moon's travelling at his absolute best at the moment. I wasn't happy with his last start fifth. So I'm going for 11 to beat number Four, Number twelve, four, and two. Twelve and two. Lovely. Can I just say something, Vince? Yeah. Don't yep. don't misgender the horses, mate. What did I say? What did I say? You said his his oh, form. Sorry, <laughs> her form. I beg your pardon. I beg your pardon. Look, we've we've got um we've got uh what are they called? Um, um, non-binary horses going around, have we? <laughs> No, sorry, I, 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 I beg your pardon. I am guilty of doing that quite a lot. Her, I should say. <laughs> Soho Seraphine. <laughs> so they're all, they're all so Soho Seraphine. Soho Seraphine on offense. top. No, no, no. Soho Seraphine on top. Yeah, Soho Seraphine on top. Number 11 to beat number four, August Moon. 12, turn the page. And number two, Zafira. Zafira. Okay, love it. All right, let's uh, skip along. Saturday night, we've got uh, the card at uh, we've got the card at Mountain that we're going to be focusing on. Uh, race number six, the Smoking Up Sprint Group Three. Yes, and and of course, yes, there's also the the heats also. of the Victoria Derby, Victoria Derby. races four and, yep. five, four and five, where the final yep. will be the following week on Victoria Cup night. Victoria 
Victoria Cup. As well as the heats of the Victoria Oaks races races seven and eight. So they'll be worth watching and um, having a look at who wins those. Mm, mm. It'll um, Uh, it'll be a nice form uh, reference for next week when we uh, when we get exactly that as well. Exactly. Yeah. So Uh, catch away. Dollar sixty. Yeah. Yeah, look, Catch Your Wave yeah, is up against horses, horses that, up I against think horses that I think he should be able to beat. Be able um, to beat. Um, um, not happy with his previous uh, eighth, of uh, course, eight in the, the um, in that big Eureka um, race big in, race in early September at Menangle, but this is a vastly different race. Um, this is a sprint over 1,720, drawn behind the one. Uh, the one will get off to a reasonable start. I think Bulletproof Boy might eventually get the lead here. Um and a really big chance, number three, too. Um, but I just think on class, catch a wave, number eight to beat, uh, number three, bulletproof boy. I'd also like the one Blitzen to finish third. And look, uh, the other class runner in the race is triple eight, number nine, but I'm not really uh, all that confident with how he's been going of late. So He's a um, bit of an enigma, I'm, isn't he? I'm, yeah, I'm putting him in for fourth, but... Uh, only because most of the others are not in not in super form. So, um, yeah, I mean, you could probably if you're going to bet on the race, I would be um, probably just going for Catch a Wave to win. Uh, and I do like the uh, Quinella for eight and three. Okay, so Quinella for eight and three, uh, Catch a Wave and Bulletproof Boy. I think Bulletproof yeah. Boy can win. I, I think if you can get well, an uncontested can. lead, yeah, I think if you can get an uncontested lead up front, there's no reason why he can't. Um, yeah. There's no reason why he can't hold on and lead um, all the way and win. All right, so that's a wrap for Melton. Uh, your absolute best bets, just to recap, from Gloucester Park tonight and then for Melton tonight, we just got. But um, let's yep. recap it all, Vin, shall we? Okay, just very briefly, uh, Gloucester Park tonight at 10.35pm uh, Australian Eastern Standard Time which mm-hmm. over there in Perth is only 7.35 these days. They're three hours behind us with the um, yeah. daylight savings coming into play last week. Three weekend. hours or some, some would say three hours or some would say <laughs> 20 years. Yes. I'm very keen on number one. That's my best bet of the night, minstrel number yeah. number one. I know it's odds on, but um, I'm extremely confident that this horse will win. Um, and, and, and I also think the Quinella of one and two um, will be, uh, and, and maybe even exact the one and two uh, is the way to go for race four, mm-hmm. Minstrel and himself. Uh, and race five, the WA Oaks, uh, I've gone for the Victorian horse, Soho Seraphine with Michael Stanley, number 11. Uh, you should get around about even money for this horse. It may even, may even drift a smidgen because of that second row draw, but it's going to be somewhere around even money. Uh, it'll give you a huge sight. It's in very good form. Um, if you wanted to go for something, by the way, in that race at a bit of each way value, I cannot believe the odds on this horse, Paul. You know how you gave us one at 60 to one at uh, Flemington? Yes. Well, yes. if you've got a, a dollar each way on this one, I reckon it'd go close and give you a good sight for your money. Number five, Castella dell'Aqua. Oh, okay. I like I it. I know that you'd like the name of that one too. Named after, um, I think it might be named after the WA Australian tennis player, the left-hander, uh, Casey Delacqua. Yes, good Carlton supporter, Casey. Yes, uh, yes, yes. <laughs> yes, so, um, yeah, this horse is in excellent form and uh, it's probably because it, uh, because she's drawn five is yep. the reason why the odds are blown out and obviously mm-hmm. the opposition she's up against, but... Yeah. This horse uh, will give you a bit of a sight, I reckon. Number five, if you want, if you like something. Okay. Sorry about that. Well, no, that's Just okay. Got a call come through. No, that's all right. All good. Castella de Lacqua each way. All right, that's the the big, big, big odds play. Uh, big odds play this weekend. All right, love it. Well, right. mate, that's a wrap, sir. That is a wrap. Done and dusted. Hands and heels. Episode number one is out the way. Next week, we're going to be joined by AD, by Adrian, uh, who's going to yep. go through a, a, a great Guineas preview. Corfu Guineas is my favourite day, Vince. Uh, oh, one of yes. my favourite days in racing. It, it's brilliant. So, 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 so you're going to be out at Caulfield um, for, for, the, for the day, and um, then hopefully, uh, if, if I have it my way, I'll grab you by the ear and drag you over to Melton <laughs> for, the, for the Victoria Cup night that I, night, Paul. I've got an inkling that I'm going to be in bed for the first you two races. You might be a bit dusty Caulfield. after that. <laughs> <laughs> I get, no, I'm gonna be, I'm gonna be in bed for the first two races at Caulfield because uh, I'm still waiting on my um, confirming all my work schedule for next week. So, oh, okay. Um, 
yeah, for those listeners and, and watchers of uh, the Jumper Punch and and uh, what I do on SEN, uh, be sure to be around there. They can follow me on my follow me on my Twitter feed as well, which is where you can find um, yeah. the link for this, which I'll put up obviously. Uh, but yeah, and I'm I'm really looking forward to doing this. It's just going to be a big weekend next weekend as well as as, yeah, as big as this huge. weekend is too. Caulfield Guineas, we've got huge racing at Mountain. Hopefully, I can make my way out there before I trek back into the studio at SEN. But yep. I'm really looking forward to it, mate. Uh, pleasure doing it with you uh, today as well. Absolutely. And, and as I said, I hope to see you out at uh, Melton on the 14th. I can tell you one thing, that the jumper puncher's own Rocco Stanietti and your cousin Mars, yes. Sebastiani, and his brother Michael, they've already confirmed that they're coming out. So <laughs> come out to Melton for a big night with all the boys from the jumper punch. And... Um, yeah, we're more than happy to uh, say hello and have a photo or whatever you like. <laughs> might even be able to get you a, a, an autograph from Paul Sebastiani. It might cost you a little bit, but you never know. <laughs> I've got the pen ready. I've got it ready. <laughs> nah, well, mate, thanks, it's been uh, terrific. Really enjoyed it. Thanks very much. Uh, now, I'll try and have a better well. screen for our viewers next week. It's a nah, bit, it's a bit, right. um, it's, a bit frosty they, today, but I'll try and fix that up for next week. As long as they can hear you, mate, there's not much to look at anyway. So. <laughs> 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 okay, no, no. Very cool. Uh, Very cool. Like, like, subscribe, become a member as well. Uh, all the same things that we do on the Jumper Punch. Uh, follow me on Twitter as well to get the link for this too. It'll go up on YouTube as well. We'll post it up on our Instagram. Um, I'll post it up on Twitter as well. And leave a comment as well. If you've got any tips, yeah. ladies and gentlemen, let, let us know in the in the comment section um, who yep. you like over the weekend. It can be it could be harness racing. It could be greyhound racing. It could be thoroughbred. It can even be yes. sport for the weekend as well. I know people like to take Premier League multis and soccer multis and, and American football multis as well. So if anyone wants to send them through, uh, by all yeah. means, please do so. Uh, thanks for listening and watching, everybody. And uh, we will see you all uh, around the same time uh, or a similar time We'll try and week. have this show posted every week before Friday night's um yep. Harness meetings, I suppose. Yeah, we'll, we'll try and get together. I think uh, it'll either be uh, next Thursday night or maybe even Friday yeah. um, in the afternoon. But um, we'll keep you posted with it all anyway. But, yeah, keep an eye out on my Twitter. Keep yep. an eye out on the Jumper Punch social pages as well. Um, get your notifications on the Jumper Punch uh, um, what's Make it sure you subscribe, um, YouTube, subscribe YouTube and, channel. Subscribe and click the bell so you get it straight away when it's uploaded. <laughs> yeah. Um, Vince, pleasure doing it with you. Bull. We'll be back next week with Adrian. Um, and Mars might be making some cameo appearances uh, every That'd now and again. Too. So it'll uh, it'll be good fun. Thanks, everyone. Uh, gamble responsibly, of course, as always. Of we course. need to send those messages out, and hopefully we can, uh, we can find some winners for you this weekend. Thanks very much. All the best.